Hi, my name is Kathy Moyne and we're here at Green Thumb Nursery to talk about fertilizers today. So, one thing that I notice when I'm getting questions in the nursery is that a lot of people confuse fertilizers with mulch. So I'm going to clear that up right now. Mulch will give your plants a little bit of nutrition, but it's kind of like a snack. It's not the main meal. So when you, when you add a mulch to your soil, like a planter's mix or um, peat moss, something like that, to plant your plants with, that's a mulch. And that will give you a little bit of nutritional value, but that's not going to be the meat and potatoes that your plants are going to be looking for. So a mulch is a mulch, fertilizer is fertilizer. Now, some people will get a compost say there's uh, some people get the, hor the compost from the, the horse stables. Um, we have steer manure that's composted. We have the Malibu compost. Again, that stuff will give you a little bit of fertilizer besides the fact that it stinks. Um, it, it's not going to be the meat and potatoes. That's just a snack. So what I'm talking about when I say fertilizers, I'm talking about nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Those are your three main ingredients of fertilizers. And then there's a lot of minor nutrients that go in there, sulfurs and, and different uh, limes, minerals, things like that, that also help with the fertilizers. But fertilizer is nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So. What I have here are some samples of the product line that I like to recommend. This is called Down to Earth. These are all organic material, uh, organic things that they use in their, in their products. They're very picky about where they get their stuff, which is why I like to recommend them because I feel like when they say that there's a certain product in here and it's good quality, I believe them. And so far they have not steered me wrong. So I do like the Down to Earth products. So, I'm going to start with nitrogen. So when you, have, when you have a fertilizer, there's three numbers on the fertilizer. Now as you can see, this one says 1200. So that's 12% 12 nitrogen, there's no phosphorus, and there's no potassium. So this is just going to give you greening and growth. So when you have a high first number, that's the one that gives you green and it also gives you growth. So, but it can also burn. So that's the number you have to be careful with because if you put too much of it on there, you're gonna get burning and it can kill the plant because I know, I've done it. So, this one is the one you have to watch out for. The next one is phosphorus. That's the middle number. And that number takes care of root stimulation and flowers. So it's gonna help your roots to develop and it's gonna help you to get flowers. That's phosphorus. Then we have potassium. This one has 22% potassium. And potassium helps with the overall health of the plant. So nitrogen for up and growth and green, phosphorus for down roots and flowers, and potassium for overall health of the plant. Now one way that you can remember that is a saying, up, down, all around. Up for greening and growth, down for roots and flowers, all around for your all around health of your plant. Now. What makes these different from each other? So this blood meal, the first one that I showed you, is derived from, yeah, you guessed it, blood. Ugh. But it works very well. This is a quick release nitrogen. So this is one you have to be careful that you don't over apply. Also, you can use blood meal for getting rid of rabbits because when you put this down, they think one of their buddies got killed. So they stay away from that area. Unfortunately, it works into the soil after a while, so it doesn't work for a long time, but you might be able to scare them off for a month or a week or so. But blood meal will do that because they think one of their buddies got killed there. Now I do also carry a feather meal, which is also just nitrogen alone. 
Now what's nice about this one is this is a slow release nitrogen. So when I am using, when I am planting my um, parsley and my greens, my, my lettuces, my parsley, uh, cilantro, um, things that you want to develop leaves but you don't want them to flower, you give them a nitrogen. And this one is because it's a slow release, you can give it to it when you plant it and then it's going to slowly break down through the season. So this one, you, you don't need to, you can apply this every six to eight weeks. Whereas the, the blood meal I just showed you has to be applied more often because it goes to work a lot faster, but it's also going to, the blood's gonna, blood meal is going to help it grow faster. So if you got, say, like a party coming and you want to boost your flowers and your, your greenery, then maybe you'd want to use the blood meal, but you have to do it more often. The seabird guano, this particular one here, is comes from let's see where does it say high phosphorus can be used uh, to give you flowers and blooms strawberries melons vegetables all types of flowers will benefit from this product here and it's seabird guano so and um, it's it, yes is and it also has some calcium in it which is nice now this one is langbanite. Langbanite has got sulfur, potassium, and magnesium. Now this one here will also help to lower the pH. And this one is really good for palm trees. So there's another product we have called Sulpomag, S-U-L-P-O-M-A-G, which is basically the same product. This one is organic. The other one is derived from different um, sources. This one is a crystalline material um, that is, let's see, it's water soluble, which is nice. And this one here, again, is an organic substance. And like I said, it works for your palm trees. So this is a good one to put on your palm trees in the spring, maybe midsummer and fall. When you get those splotches on the leaves of the palm trees, especially queen palms, it's usually a it's usually a, a minor nutrient deficiency, which is what this will correct. So this is good stuff. So then I want to talk about some mineralizers. Now this one, this one is called azomite. And this one is from a mine in Utah. It is an or a um, volcanic product. And this one here greens up the leaves. It gives the minor it gives you your minor nutrients. I plant this I put this on everything, including my old established house plants, my old pots that I've that have been potted for a long time. I'll put some of this in there in the spring, a little bit of Malibu compost on the top. And, and if I need to put some new soil in there, I can put some new soil in there if it's, it's been depleted throughout the season. But this brings back those nice minerals that get depleted out of the soil every time you water your containers. And for in the ground, it just really makes a huge difference on how green your plants are. So I know this is a great product and I recommend it all the time, azomite. So then the next one I want to talk about, now these are balanced fertilizers. These fertilizers here, this one is an alfalfa meal, and as you can see, it's got the three numbers. It's got 2.5%, yeah, 2.5% nitrogen, 0.5% phosphorus, and 2.5% potassium. So it's kind of low, but what I like to recommend this for is in the spring with roses. Roses really like this little oomph to, to get them going in the spring. So this is a good one for, for growing in the spring. Now I also like to recommend fishbone meal. Now this one is high in phosphorus. It's got a high middle number and it's a little bit lower in nitrogen. And this is another one that you could apply to your roses in the spring to help give them root stimulation and um, flowers. Now you should have, if you do have roses and you haven't trimmed them back, you need to trim them back. This is mid, the first week in February, so it's time for you to start trimming back your roses, peeling all the leaves off if you haven't already done that. After you get three inches of new growth, then you can give it some fertilizer, mm, two to three inches. So then, then that's where I would use my rose and flower mix. And this one here is 4% nitrogen, 
potass or phosphorus and 4% potassium and it also has some magnesium in it which is Epsom salts. So I also recommend that you give your roses a handful of Epsom salts and also your plants. A lot of your vegetables and your fruit trees, all of them would like to have some magnesium. Just don't go overboard on it. Again, all of these things are within moderation. Just because it's good doesn't mean you have to go crazy with it. Because I do that all the time, so I get it. All right, so now we're going to talk about, this is called BioLive. Now what's awesome about this is this is something you, you can use as a transplant fertilizer or as a uh, brand new transplant. So if you're, if you're digging something up and transplanting it to a new spot or you're planting new like your vegetables or your plants, um, use a little bit of this in the hole. Now this is 5% nitrogen, 4% phosphorus, and 2% um, potassium. So you can see, what, see the numbers, how they work. Um, so this is going to give you a little more growth, but what's cool about this is it has mycorrhizae fungus. And what mycorrhizae fungus does, it's naturally occurring in the soil. The way they discovered it was they were out in the, in the wilderness, they were replacing pine trees, that had, you know, areas that had burned down and they were planting pine trees, little, little seedlings. And they noticed in some areas they were thriving and in other areas they were not. So they're like, okay, what's going on? So they look down into the soil and they figure out, okay, what's the difference between the two areas? Well, the mycorrhizae fungus was the difference. So then they're like, oh my goodness, that's, that's, there's something to this mycorrhizae thing. So it's funguses, uh, mushrooms are the bloom of these funguses. So when you see mushrooms, that is a form of a mycorrhizae fungus. And they're part of that microbes that help to break down uh, bark products, break down the fertilizers, and, and pr help them to uh, get f uh, water, and it also helps to protect them in the soil from diseases, certain diseases. So without the mycorrhizae fungus, they don't do as well. So that's, this one has a bunch of different types in there. There's different strains for different types of plants. They put most of them in there that would work for what you're going to be planting this with. And, but again, because it has 5% nitrogen, don't go too crazy with it. I thought, oh yeah, I'll just throw a handful in there, my little bitty plant, and it just went and died. So you follow the directions. That's why they're there. Follow the directions. So again, mycorrhizae fungus, and part of how this stuff works are those little microorganisms that are in the soil. And they are in the top four to six inches of the soil. So if our soil is not warm, so I usually say when the soil when the nighttime temps are 50 and above on a consistent basis, then our soil temps are usually about 50 degrees. If the soil temp is below 50, none of this stuff really works because those, those microorganisms are sleeping. Once the soil gets warm, then they wake up and they start metabolizing the, the products that you put in the soil for the plants and then they make that available to your plants. So there's a symbiotic relationship. I've always said if you have healthy soil, you have healthy plants. I didn't always think that because when I pour a fertilizer on something, I want to see that plant go crazy. But really, that's, that's false economy because if your soil is not healthy, just because you put some fertilizer on there, miracle Grow. I mean, uh, did I say that? Um, if you put the fertilizer on it, a liquid fertilizer on it, and you see your plants grow crazy, that's doing absolutely nothing for your roots and for those microorganisms. And later on down the line, if say you decide you don't want to feed it that anymore, your plants are going to decline a little bit. So it's always good to have healthy soil. The healthy soil will take care of your healthy plants. Okay, so let me see, where else do I need to talk about? Okay, biofish. This one here is 7% nitrogen, 7% phosphorus, and 2% potassium. And this one comes from fish bone meal, fish meal, feather meal, sulfate of potash, alfalfa meal, and kelp meal. So this has got a lot of really good stuff in here. Now when I'm planting my tomatoes, and my um, veggies that I want to give me flour to produce fruits or produce vegetables like your um, zucchinis, your peppers, your uh, tomatoes, anything that flowers and gives a fruit, this is what I like to use. And this one here is also a slow release fertilizer. So I use the earth box, which is a, a um, 
a planter box that is all encompassed with the soil and the fertilizer. It's one pot shot. You, you, you plant it and, uh, and I do have a video on that if you want to see it. Um, I, you plant it and then you leave it there for the season. You, all you do is water it and harvest your plants. I like to use this product for those that application. But even if you weren't doing that, even you're, you're in the ground it works well, in containers it works well. This is what I like to use on my veggies. And it's organic so I really like to use this one. Now for your fruit trees. So there's two types. This one is your citrus. And you can see it's not a real high nitrogen, it's 6%, but the phosphorus is a 3 and the potassium is 3. But this also has calcium, sulfur, iron, and zinc. So citrus trees or evergreen fruit trees, including uh, avocados, guavas, things that keep their leaves during the winter, um, those guys like zinc a little more. Then we have the deciduous fruit trees. Those are the fruit trees that drop their leaves. So this is what you would use for those. This is a fruit tree fertilizer. Again, it's 6% nitrogen, little less phosphorus, 4% potassium, and this has 8% calcium and magnesium. So this one, the deciduous fruit trees actually like more calcium. Now, not to say that you couldn't use these, either one, if you just want to get one, I would go with the citrus and then give it a little bone meal if on your deciduous fruit trees. But if you, if you like me and you're a geek and you, you, you want to use the citrus one for the evergreens and the fruit tree one for the deciduous ones. Okay, that is pretty much covered all the ones that I wanted to cover today. If you liked what you saw, please click the like button and hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to our channel and the bell to let us know or let you know when we have out new uh, videos. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.